If you muttered something stupid, like, oh, my life sucks, on some random night, and the Aurora Borealis Sky Gods took that sh seriously and teleported your ass into a different dimension where things sucked even more, what would you do? In this video, we'll follow an ungrateful PTSD-stricken girl who's getting taught a lesson by charged particles colliding with gases in Earth's upper atmosphere, see if we can make better decisions, and ultimately attempt to coax her into savagely killing her father to save herself. I'm going to break down the mistakes made, what you should do, and how to beat the angel in It's a Wonderful Knife. We start out following the grand pappy Roger Evans, minutes after he declined a massive payout to sell his home over to a spray tan resort tycoon everybody hates with a burning passion, Henry Waters. The deal would have granted Waters the rights to terraform their nice suburb into a shopping mall. Funny, Waters is made out to be the asshole here, but it sounds like all the other residents signed off. Sounds like everybody's on board with the gentrification except for the geriatric. Naturally, Roger made some enemies with this move. The doorbell rings. Henry, I told you... Should have taken the deal. Realistically, even with a shotgun in his hand, this dude came at old Roger so fast it wouldn't have mattered anyway. While he's staring at the ceiling, gushing blood, and generally probably just regretting his stubbornness, his granddaughter is out getting shwasted at a high school party. Unwittingly, the next target is heir to Roger's home. She goes for the kiss. Oh. Look, we can't really feel bad for Eddie here. See, Eddie made the all too common mistake of macking on the air to a home owned by a short-sighted senior that had failed to anticipate his own inevitable murder after denying eminent domain. It was obvious that Hannah needed to be sufficiently intimidated into handing the house over. Personally, I think hiring an assassin to shank her boy toy with a candy cane was a bit excessive. Now, Hannah's gonna be too freaked out sit down and sign a bunch of documents. And we gotta dispose of another corpse. Speaking of subtlety, the assassin should really have made it look like Roger tripped and fell into the fireplace, as old people accidentally do from time to time. Won't it be a bit suspicious that Evan Waters came over demanding this deal signed, was denied, then minutes later Roger was murdered and his daughter was involved in another murder. I think they call that probable cause. <laughs> Okay, it appears that Mr. Waters doesn't need her signature, or this is something else entirely. Either way, it sucks to be Hannah, when he runs out to check on the chick who's actively getting prison shanked as if she wouldn't be next. Turns out, she's next. Before the assassin slips the dagger into her carotid, she whacks it in the head with her camera, ditching it in the woods where nobody's around to help her at all. Turns out, not a good move. I think I'd have gone back inside with everyone else and tripped that clicky thought as a diversion. Winnie's brother, Jimmy, football tackles the assassin to the ground in the nick of time. While the assassin is shook, they both hightail it out of there. Except, f he's right in front of them now. It's clear now that we're dealing with a teleporting demon. Running's not an option. It's a fight to the death. Now or never. While Jimmy's holding off the knife for what seems like an absolute eternity, Winnie apparently had the keen combat instincts to run off into a random garage in search of a car battery that was all wired up with jumper cables already. Just ready to cook a motherfucker. And what do you know? She found one. <laughs> Winnie pulls the mask off, revealing the assassin to be none other than Evan Waters. And that, folks, is why you pay other people to murder for you. Clearly, he had the money, but revenge just must have been too sweet to pass up. Great, now Winnie, go back into that garage, find a shovel, and kick it down through his neck until there is a clear separation. I've watched enough movies to know that electricity is an unreliable form of execution. If Marv survived getting zapped into a skeleton by Kevin, this dude can easily survive a car battery. It's one year later. Winnie clearly got the short end of the stick. After torching Evan Waters and suffering intense PTSD, her university application was denied. Mr. Waters' son threatens to end her life while on a brisk walk. Her insufferable family gives zero shits about her paving the way for their thriving father-son realty business. And on Christmas Eve, her parents get her brother a new truck. And for her, pink pajamas. Winnie is pit
Rightfully so, storming off to meet up with her BF Robbie at a party, who she finds out is banging her best friend Darla, and has been for the past year. <laughs> yeah, she's not doing great, and I have a feeling it's about to get a whole lot worse. Under the Aurora Borealis, when he wishes that she was never born. The God's answer. Did the power go out or something? Yep, it got worse. It can always get worse. When he executes a smart play, bashing the cop window open and radioing for help. Luckily, help arrives in seconds. It's Buck, who's a sheriff now? Already, things are not right in the neighborhood. Buck was never a sheriff and claims to not even know who Winnie is. Not only that, but he says that the angel has already killed 26 people and claims a new victim every couple of weeks. Okay, I think it's safe to assume our wish upon a star transported us into an alternate dimension. It's the logical explanation here, especially after Buck's big bro shows up. Hi. Winnie rushes home to find out that her wish came true. Her family has no idea who she is, and her brother is dead. She goes back to the same party as last time. None of her friends know her either. Basically, everything is fu- as they say, be careful what you wish for. You might just get it. Silver lining here though, you're not getting swung on by the angel like this dude. Pretty impressive considering how high he is. Equally embarrassing for the angel. Getting dunked on with trash and flower pots by a guy who's most likely hallucinating half of what he can actually see. Unfortunately, he couldn't power through the buzz hard enough to save himself. Please. This message has been sponsored by the Office of National Drug Control Policy. Dare to be drug free. Meanwhile, Winnie's been investigating. She finds conclusive evidence that she is, in fact, an interdimensional ghost. A high school yearbook with her picture missing. She invites the only person who she never actually knew, Bernie, to help her Scooby-Doo this Chris Angel mind freak. Before we continue the investigation, I feel compelled to include this scene of Percy taking a break from smoking on her couch to smoking outside where she finds the severed head of Mr. I'm not gonna live my life in fear. <laughs> Maybe a little fear is a good thing. Okay, back to Winnie and her sidekick. D Bernie's got a full Charlie Day investigation going on in her living room. Let's find out what she knows. One, the victims have been mostly teenagers. Two, he murders every few weeks. Three, all the murdered teenagers had families with businesses in town. Four, all of these businesses are in competition with Henry Waters somehow. Five, based on Winnie's wish, she wasn't around to stop Waters, so he was able to kill his way to the top of the town. Okay, so it's Waters. The bad Bad news is, his brother is the sheriff. The kind of good news is, he'll find you as he always does. All you have to do is strap up, then clap this idiot when he tries to choke you out with Christmas lights or something. His downfall is his need to be creative and intimate with his murders. Since he's gonna be in the same costume that he's murdered everybody else in, proving it was self-defense will be easy. Now, where to get a gun? Well, I'd start off with stealing one of the bumbling moron sheriff's guns. I'm sure Winnie can throw some charm on Buck to get that gun belt off. She's not gonna enjoy it, but I can assure you getting stabbed to death is definitely worse. Two bonuses. One, Buck will be more inclined to come to your defense. And two, the angel's less likely to attack when Buck is nearby, as I don't think Buck knows Waters is the killer, and thus is likely to open fire on the angel, thereby potentially forcing the killer to kill Buck, aka his brother. A bit too risky. But hey, I'm sure shacking up with the paranoid town weirdo girl who has zero weapons and even less muscle is gonna work out great for you. Nope. Through purely the fault of the attacker, they escape unscathed with new unfounded confidence in their ability to defend themselves. How is the Angel one of the most successful known serial killers by body count in the United States? I'm not counting South America or the Soviet Union due to the obvious advantages. This dude has been stumbling into every garbage can and coffee table in his way, getting pots smashed over his head by dope heads and judo thrown by teenage girls. F embarrassing. What happened to the assassin who smoked Roger, Hannah, and Eddie all in one night? I want that guy back. 
when he completely blows critical scarce lead time and sharing a couple smiles while staring up at the aurora borealis with bernie like she wasn't almost gutted like a fish two minutes ago apparently it's super rare to see the lights this far from the arctic bernie thinks this isn't a coincidence does this prompt winnie to attempt a rewish being a little more choosy with her words this time nah she shrugs it off and they stroll off to a secluded dark movie theater to eat popcorn and watch old Christmas flicks. You do realize you're being hunted, right? Like an assassin who has killed dozens of people and tried to kill you multiple times is still actively pursuing you. Maybe you should have wished for more brain cells. This dude has found you everywhere you've gone. Safe to assume he followed you here too. If this theater has a single entrance, I'd probably leave the door unlocked and just stand in the corner with something sharp and then call the police. Then put that charm on Buck like I talked about earlier. I can tell you what I wouldn't do. Turn on a loud movie, kick my feet up, and sink into the recliner with my back to the entrance. I do wish I was born. I wish Jimmy was alive. See? Nothing. I'm not an expert on interdimensional genie gods, but I'm pretty sure you have to say that earnestly while staring up at the northern lights. Not half a is some chick you just met. And that's how it originally worked, anyway. Well, Winnie nods off to sleep and miraculously doesn't get killed. The next morning, Bernie wakes her up to show off a second gigantic board of news articles, pictures of the lights, and I'm sure a whole bunch of other totally related documents that are definitely not there to just pad out the board. All of which, without a doubt, prove what we've known since getting warped into this dimension. The Aurora is why Winnie is here. No sh- Oh, that's not all. Supposedly, local folklore says the lights are the spirit of somebody who died violently. This somebody, in their opinion, is Henry Waters. And his spirit sent her here out of the goodness of his heart or something? I feel like you guys are slinging around a lot of unsubstantiated guesses as fact. Again, the two obvious things that you need to try here. One, attempt to re-wish upon the lights. And if that doesn't work, two, hook Henry Waters up to a car battery again, or really anyone by the sounds of it. Send their spirit up into the lights, then re-wish upon the lights again. Bernie hits her with the real bad news. The aurora is fading, and once it fades out completely, she's stuck here, presumably forever, since it's Henry's spirit that's causing the lights, and not just any aurora, which means she can't just take a trip up to the Arctic at a later date. The mechanics of all this are pretty damn vague. I say we jack the next car battery we see hook Bernie up to it, and wish we could go back into the previous dimension. Except that we're, we're cool and talented and smart this time. Winnie heads back home to torment her not family some more, attempting to get her not dad to bait waters out into the open. At this point, they fuck hate her for being a psycho, saying they're her mom and dad, and the late Jimmy was her brother, and Evan Waters killed him, and blah blah blah. I don't understand. Mr. Waters is holding a Christmas festival, but she needs her dad to get close to him? This is all too complicated. Waters is too hard of a target, and you're likely to either get killed by him before you can kill him, or kill him and immediately end up in a prison cell distinctly lacking any windows which you could send a little prayer through. Hook Bernie up. Up. She'll understand. And it's not like she has a lot to lose. I mean, this whole town has named her Weirdo. Shit. If you want to throw an addendum to have her reincarnated as someone cool, talented, and smart in your dimension too, I say that's an easy sell. The other problem with stopping by home is that it's predictable. <laughs> Winnie and Bernie bolt upstairs. Winnie hard stunning the killer with a picture on the wall. Wow, look how resourceful she is. No way that painting sent his ass flying down the stairs hard enough to knock him out. Get the f out. Their next logical move is to tiptoe over the clearly not lifeless body with a knife in his hand, and then get your gooch slid open when he suddenly wakes up. We all know that's gonna happen, so it's bizarre to me that they don't 450 splash this motherfucker before he has the chance. If a flimsy painting knocked him out, you should see what the heel of your boot can do. Or three. Oh my fuck. 
God, nobody even attempts to secure the knife when crossing over either? Jesus, tap dancing. Christ, this dude has a knife in his hand, Bernie. How about remove it before your bestie splits her two femoral arteries over him? Winnie's the only remotely sensible person here, and that's not saying a lot. Going for the knife to remove this threat altogether instead of playing cat and mouse until he eventually gets the drop. Only problem is, she's stuck in quarter speed slow-mo for dramatic effect. She can't do it. She just has to remove the mask beforehand because we need to humanize the man trying to kill us. It's like the reverse villain monologue. This is definitely a shank first, see who the corpse is later type of situation. <laughs> Oh, well that sucks. Now you know that if you weren't born, your dad would have turned into a vicious serial killer. Cool, we all know you're not gonna kill your not dad, especially not brutally enough to turn his soul into pretty waving lights during the equinoxes. With time running out and the aurora fading, she spends her time bandaging Bernie instead of electrocuting her. Evidence for this is Winnie telling the others and herself that after Jimmy was murdered by Waters, allegedly, Waters was able to control her dad, using him to remove the competition, making her dad kill in order for Waters to expand his empire, allegedly. Yeah, or in this timeline, your dad's actually just killing people because he's a f psycho. I know that's hard for you to stomach, but you have zero evidence Waters is killing anyone, and 100% conclusive evidence your dad is. That look of confusion when he woke up you were talking about wasn't him battling angels and demons on his shoulders. It was him literally being confused, waking up after getting hit in the head. Bernie and Auntie do their best to pep Winnie up to kill her dad, saying that if she doesn't, he will kill her, kill tons of other innocent people, and generally just destroy this entire town. Great, should have thought of that while you were holding a knife over his neck, dumbass. We lure him here. All right, let's kill my not dad dad. Amazing plan. My mind is blown. The only problem is that you all turn into wet noodles the second Casper shows up. Oh, and they even threw up a giant sign to warn him it's a trap. Seems to me like all David has to do is crack a couple beers and turn the TV on. Then, once the lights fade out tonight, he can go back on to killing. Okay, the trap is set. The killer is stalking toward the obvious mannequins used as bait for the obvious ambush. He draws within striking distance. The trap is sprung. Now, Winnie! Ah! It's just Robbie and Darla. A, a fire extinguisher? A, a fire extinguisher. I'm not even... You know you have to brutally kill him, right? Not just daze him like he's in a Bugs Bunny cartoon? Where's the killer to end all these morons? Please. Finally, the killer kills the lights, causing everybody to shout at each other, giving away their positions. Winnie didn't even bring a flashlight. Perfect. Do you not have a flashlight on your smartphone? Oh, whatever. That Polaroid camera seems to be working just fine. I think you might even be able to get into film school with those shots of Robbie and Darla getting stabbed to death. So raw. Can we go back to that line when he said, I, I just want to relish in it. We lure him here. All right, let's kill my not dad dad. Yep, that's the one. <laughs> so sassy. Like talking sh in the shower. All right, back to the fight. Winnie takes off up a flight of stairs, breaking off a broom handle and spearing the killer through the gut. It's technically a win, but I don't think this qualifies. I'm certainly not satisfied. Oh, well, it'll have to do. The light already faded from her dad's eyes and floated up into the sky or something. Winnie and Bernie take to the pier to make her wish. That is, until Bernie hits her with the guilt trip. This Christmas was gonna be her last, if you know what I mean. Winnie responds something to the effect of, good luck with that, in Cass or Wish. I want my life back. It doesn't work. Awkward. Apparently the lights look angry and are suggesting that they kill Waters now, according to Bernie, the resident Aurora Borealis folklore specialist. I'd say that's as good a reason as any to kill somebody. Can we make sure to grab some rope and a can of gas on the way? Burning at the stake is a time-honored tradition, as well as extremely painful. Should make the skylights happy. They don't. They show up to the festival empty-handed. It's like everyone's zombified or something. Yeah, this timeline blows. Let's f*** this dude up and bounce. Sucks to say, we might not have the time or the capability to perform a Lord of Light ritual. Hmm. The next best thing, steal a car and do a burnout on his face. Quick, effective, but most importantly, violent. I think you need to get out of that crowd right now before you get overpowered by these drones. This is like that assimilation movie. You gotta blend in or GTFO. Or you can just 
talk with Waters for 10 minutes. It's not like your time is extremely limited or anything. Thankfully, Bernie steps up, the rookie underdog coming hot out of left field. <laughs> The Skylights are happy now, and they didn't even need to head stomp Waters' drive style, which means Winnie gets to go home. Pink jumpsuit, a happy, loving life and all. Things are better than ever now, too. Bernie's alive and remembers everything. It's a Christmas miracle. In the end, all Winnie had to do was be grateful. A lesson to us all. Beside that, brutally murdering her dad in Waters would have been far easier than she made it out to be. For that reason, I think It's a Wonderful Knife was beat. Moral of the story, be careful what you wish for. It might suck, forcing you to have to murder your way back to your previous life.